Hello everyone, I'm Mal and I'm joined by my trusty compatriots, Mickey and Vanguard. Hello fellas. Hello, hello. Hello, Mr. Mal. So, hello, just, a, just a quick little bit of info here. We're going to be talking about a lot of different things related to XCOM. We're not exactly sure how many videos this will take. It, they'll all be in the same playlist together. It might be cut up a little bit differently on, on each other's channels. But the subject is XCOM. Sort of, where is XCOM 2? You know, where is it today? Then we're going to take a look at the past. We're going to talk about mods, significant conversions like long war and then we're going to talk to or speak to the future of XCOM and in particular all of us have collected questions from our community members about what they would like to see in future DLC and or presumably at some point we will see XCOM 3 and what do folks want to see in that game and how much do you want carried over from the previous ones so Mickey is going to act as sort of our producer for this video <laughs> because he is the resident uh lunatic of the knowledge well I, let's He's just say let's just <laughs> Let's just say there's pages and pages of notes, and we made Mickey cut that down I've been a that bit. I've been making over the years. This isn't a recent thing. It's taking me a long time, and I've been holding back. I mean, like I need to make a video about XCOM 2, but I don't want to just be like just entirely negative. And you guys are gonna balance that out. I feel you're gonna be right, for right, the most right. part a little bit more positive right. than me. Well, well, well I guess we're for, for the most out, part. Right. Yeah, 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 we'll see. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. So let's start with okay. So let's start with the present, and I, I and I think this one I I would like to think we're gonna have some sort of universal thoughts on but mm. xcom 2 tactical legacy pack thoughts yes yes i want to hear that <laughs> mel do you want to start or me or vanguard i well okay i guess what i will say the, the low-hanging fruit is the fact that they gave it away for free essentially they're oh yes they're not increasing yeah, that's the cost. awesome yes you know, they're not increasing the cost of the collector's pack you know so if you don't already have it and you and you get xcom later as part of the collector's pack you get the tactical legacy as part of it i think it was a really good move I and how, how did you put it, Mal? You can't beat the low, low price of free. Right, yeah, you can't yeah. beat the low, low price of free. Yeah, you can't. And so I, I think that was a good move. And then I, I've played through the Tactical Legacy Pack. As a matter of fact, I took a couple days off of uh, my day job, and I played through the entire thing in, like, I don't know, a day and a half or something. I was playing a lot of it. And I enjoyed Very it. good I videos. I watched, I think, the last uh, two campaigns. Oh, no, actually, I watched three of the campaigns. Three out of four of them. Pretty good. Oh, well, I enjoyed thanks. that. I appreciate that. I thought the story was good. I thought it was interesting. There were some things that, like, storyline didn't add up i had a lot of comments about that actually like well wait i thought yeah. they saying they saw this thing if this thing didn't exist yet i I'm love like, that guys they couldn't go they didn't have a budget to go and create all yeah. new aliens yeah. and stuff so you know come on maybe a little bit of suspension of disbelief and just go with it you know They're um, with Bethesda. but as is typical of gamers we're going to be critical right yeah. even if it's quote unquote free. but before being critical should we cover what we liked about it what they added that we liked the experiences that we had that we enjoyed should we start with that either of you guys well, want to go yeah i really enjoyed the i really enjoyed the stories i like the fact that they added in the alternate music was really cool. I just yes, the music yes. Every time I went into a new set of missions. I, I like that the music was optional. That is, I, I yeah, love any yeah. time that they add stuff, yeah. but it's optional. If you don't like it, yeah. turn off. Yeah, I turn love off that. Absolutely. Like yeah. And the gear, the fact that they remastered the gear from the original, you know, XCOM. XCOM yes. I, yeah. I, I really, really like that because as we talk about XCOM, it's a very nice like, touch. Yeah. Let's just say it, it, it helps resolve some of the things that, that I have issues with with XCOM 2, right? So I like that an awful lot and the, you know I, I'd say it was too short but honestly I just burnt through it it was actually quite a bit of content when you think about it but no I, I, I overall I really really enjoyed it Vanguard yeah same thing those build the Avenger missions were awesome I think you told about them all in your Twitter right you, you mentioned something and wow they're just great I mean I oh really enjoyed... sorry sorry can I just interrupt for a second did, uh, did you guys <laughs> notice um, a firestorm one of the advanced yes. interceptors I noticed that yeah. that implies that they got really light into the camp campaign before they lost. That's really interesting. And also would yeah. make sense as to why they had plasma less That's weapons but lost it. it. So much. That's very, very interesting. It so much because it, it, it brings a connection uh, between XCOM 1 and XCOM 2 mm. because at uh, for, for those of you that play it, both games, I, I think most of people are going to agree with me, they are a little bit disconnected from one another. I mean, I know XCOM 2 is in the future, it's another history, of course, but it's nice to see that you get a familiarity of, wow, I reached that point and I lost, so it makes more sense. I don't know, at least for me, because I'm not a good player of XCOM like you two are, so I lost a lot of those campaigns and I, I feel connected to, to that history. That, that's why I think it was great. And also, I think it's a great reason to buy War of the Chosen if 
you don't like that DLC because the Tactical Legacy Pack is way better than War of the Chosen, at least for me it is. It brings more variation, brings more replay value, it brings more connection to the old game. I, I really enjoyed it. That's my two cents of the, the new DLC. And you, Mickey? What I liked, I liked the first part, the first campaign that didn't have Advent. I really don't like Advent. I feel they're clone troopers, but I'll get back to that point when we talk about XCOM 2 proper. But when I was playing the first few missions of the first campaign, it really, really reminded me of base XCOM 1, which I will be referring to EW Enemy Unknown as XCOM 1. And I really like that. And you're fighting against aliens, just aliens, no Advent. Really enjoyed that. I love that feeling. And also, yeah. in the first campaign, there were no objectives, which meant there was no line of play problems, which, for those of you that don't know, line of play is when the pods of enemies are tied to a specific point that varies depending on your position and the objective. So if you move forwards, they move forwards. If you move back, they move back. Left, right, they continue. So they try to keep their relative position between you and the objective. That wasn't the case in the first campaign because there was no objective. It was just kill aliens. And also to that end, I don't know if they changed that, but the later campaigns, I didn't notice that as much either. I don't know if you guys noticed that either, that the enemies would be almost like psychically, telepathically aware of your presence like they were in base XCOM 2, where they follow you, they shadow you no matter what. I didn't feel that way in the later campaigns, even the ones that had objectives. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I wasn't playing it to, no, as no, no. open-mindedly. No, no, right. And I, and I think part of it too is there was a lot more static. They, they, there weren't as many patrols either. They were yeah. static in yeah. nature. So that was kind of that was kind of cool because I've gone through and I've played through some of the missions again by myself. And I, you know, they were they were basically in the same place as they were the, the previous time. And that might be so that you can go through and try to get a higher score or what have you and get better at sort of a set condition and so that those scores mean something across players because if it's a totally different experience every time you play then how would you have that comparison right yeah, so yeah. i think that might have been by design i don't think it was to address what you were bringing up it just happened to address it in other words they, they fixed a problem that some of us had that they didn't know that they had in terms of the aliens always just knowing where you were which i think is a bunch of uh, yeah it's you know, horrible nonsense yeah it's yeah. it's but we'll talk about problems with the base game when we get to that but one more thing that i liked was custom maps this was really, really long overdue. The fact that they have multiplayer since XCOM 1 and the fact that they could have just made the enemy player, the person you're playing against, be an AI. You could set up their squad the same way you set up your squad. We finally, finally have that. Thank God that was so long overdue and thank you to the devs to actually seeing the value of that. And also, didn't they add another play mode? There was the campaigns, custom maps, and not... No, they... they the challenges. Challenges, yeah. yes. Yeah, they added challenges, All of the yeah. previous challenges that yes, are, are available are now, are now available in offline yeah. mode and all ready to go, which is also cool. Yeah, really, really good, good idea. It's like when Left Dead 2, when they started adding mutators, and they realized the value of having the old mutators available to be played at any time, they added that. Instead of just being this mutator of the week, you like the old ones, too bad. It's really good they said, okay, if you have fun with this, well, then you can play it any time. So it's really good for them on doing that. And last thing that I liked, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed, and this is kind of, we're getting to spoiler territory, although we, we, we would, considering how much in depth we're talking about the game. The three avatars at the end of the first campaign, I say specifically the first campaign because I don't want to talk about the other campaigns yet. I really liked that you went up against three avatars in the first campaign. The first one, the first time I went up against them, I got completely raped and I think I was playing the second highest difficulty which is the highest that you can actually play on. The other ones are locked. You're not allowed to play on them. And when I first went up against Avatar, I completely forgot how to fight them and I got completely destroyed. Second time I realized, bingo, grenade spam, that's how you do it. You you blitz them down, Avatar striking, big problem with the game. We'll get to that. We talk about XCOM 2 base, but I really liked it when I went up against the second Avatar and thought, wow, two? Oh, that's ballsy game. Well done. I'm not sure I I'm going to do this, run out of resources, but you know, managed it, no problem. Got to the third one, I'm like, I have no consumable items, and I loved it. The fact that I actually had to think, like, laterally, like, what do I do about this problem? There's a problem here, I need to resolve it, I actually have to stop and think about it. It's not just grenade spam, overwatch spam, I had to stop and work out how to deal with a problem, and I haven't experienced that in XCOM 2 in a long, long time. They're very, very rare occasions where that happen in XCOM 2, and I really like I had that in the DLC. And that's a great theme because it's showing that the devs are trying to vary the way the game goes, and for experience commanders like both of you here you say something like that it's very grateful i mean it shows that the game is really improving because if the game that you guys both of you have way over 1000 hours of gameplay you guys are having to think that that's showing that they are changing things. yeah yeah it's a very good thing yeah it is ballsy of them mal your yeah, opinions cool. on the three avatars at the end of the campaign no I, I i actually like i said i enjoyed i enjoyed it all the way through and for me i was rusty 
I hadn't played XCOM 2 in a while, and I hadn't realized how long it had been since I'd played XCOM 2. Um, you know, I've been playing a lot of Long War 1, and so I made a lot of, like, uh, you know, questionable <laughs> questionable choices here and there <laughs> throughout the campaign. But, uh, but no, but th- by the end, I felt comfortable, and, mm. you know, I, I enjoyed it. I think you're going to talk a little bit about how effective explosives are in XCOM yes. 2. Yes, yeah, we'll too get Maybe too much that. so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, which can, can actually make for sloppy gameplay. That's one thing yeah. Long War punishes you if you try to rely on those things. But no, I really, again, I really, uh, really, really enjoyed the Tactical Legacy Pack. I liked War of the Chosen, too, for, for many things in it. There were some mechanics that, and I'm sure we'll talk about that some, too, but mm. there were many things in War of the Chosen I liked as well, uh, particularly the optimization. I was disappointed that the optimization wasn't available unless you were playing War of the Chosen, because that was one of the things about XCOM 2 base, is that holy moly, does it take a long time for stuff to load, right? Yeah, so, yeah, I noticed that as well, yeah, yeah. So, well, before we get to you know, War of the Chosen, is there anything else you'd like to add about what you liked about the TLP, Tactical Legacy Pack? No, I think it's a very good improvement no, I, over I, I, the I previous DLCs. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, right. I think you gotta, you gotta be pretty limited in your, you know, I, I think anyone looking at it objectively has to think well you know this was a lot added and yeah again it's hard to beat free yeah okay so what didn't you like about it um, that you need to buy war of the chosen <laughs> i i wouldn't really say that was a downside i wouldn't yeah, because i think to be honest with you i would feel more comfortable if it was not free and if it was just tactical legacy pack because i i really hate war of the chosen i, I hate what my passion and I know I'm, what I'm buying is not War of the Chosen. I'm buying the Tactical Legacy pack. At least for me, yeah. I, I see it like that. So basically, so, you feel that buying something bad for the sake of getting something good, you're still paying. You're essentially paying for the Tactical Legacy pack. The, yeah, because, because the way I see it is that I'm not giving the correct feedback to the developers. I mean, I want them to see that I want Tactical Legacy pack. I don't want War of the Chosen. I don't want to buy War of the Chosen because I think it's a bad DLC. Tactical Legacy pack, you have my money. It's a very good DLC. I want to buy it. Mm. So, oh, I see what you're saying, yeah, Vanguard. You're yeah. saying you would have liked to have the option, if you didn't already own War of the Chosen, you would have liked the option exactly. to just buy the TLP with the necessary underlying files yeah. from War of the Chosen without actually buying yeah. War of the Chosen so you could send a clear message that that's where you would want your money to go. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You you just spoken way better than I could. That's the issue. I, I want to do that. So it's just a minor thing. I know it's, I'm, I'm being but hurt i'm complaining about something that 99 percent of the people got for free but i, I want to give that the feedback that i want yeah. tactical legacy pack i don't want war of the chosen on next country that, well, that's the, the well, we'll get we'll say. get to the reasons why you don't like the war of the chosen but uh, what else didn't you like about the tlp oh well, actually i didn't see anything i like uh, sorry i didn't like about the tlp I think everything that I saw, I didn't see the entire thing because I didn't have the time. But everything that I looked up, I said, wow, this is great. And wow, this is awesome. Or at least, yeah, it's okay. I, I didn't see anything that I saw and I said, wow, this is bad. Okay. I, uh, Mal? Um, I, I think for me, like I understood why at the end of the mission, okay, you can choose between this gear and this gear. Okay. So you have to make, you know, in, in some cases you have to make like a compelling choice. And then your soldiers rank up and they get certain perks and you only have certain classes um, available and it's kind of woven into the story. And I was fine with all of that, but some of the perk choices were so yeah. suboptimal. They really made, like the Templar, as an example, was like, you know, just not all that useful. And I had to, I had to try really hard to utilize them with any real effect. I honestly, I'm not a big fan of that particular class anyway, but I just felt like that that was probably my only real criticism was the lack of control on the perk choices. And I get why they did it. I get exactly why they did it. I just wish that we had the option, maybe an advanced feature, an advanced option. You know, do you want to play through with the ability to choose the perks? Yes, I would. I've played through it the way you yeah. intended, but now I'd like to play through and choose those soldiers' rank ups myself because at least for my playstyle, I'm not saying that I would choose better perks than they did, but I would choose better perks for me. Yeah, so what you're trying to say is that you want to have the option to not be tied down to what the devs think that they're the best. You want yeah. to figure out by yourself. And, and as, as a player, I, I can see that. 
I mean, it's fine to have the tie down style of gameplay for a first gameplay or for a guy that doesn't know the game very well. But I agree with you, you should have the option to turn it off and decide by yourself as an experienced player. But yeah, having options. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. agree. There, there were a lot of um, stupid choices when it came to what loot would you like? And it's like, would I like new body armor for everyone and the ability to fire rockets and blast launchers? Or would I like some replacement grenades, increasing the damage of the grenades? Grenades are great, but when you're going from replacing one item to getting a completely new item, you're always going to go with what's new. Always. Every time. Well, and, and if you took some, some of those choices too, if you took them early on, they would just... They'll get replaced. replaced. Yeah, like exactly. You would, yeah. You would lose something real, like as an example, you might have some mimic beacons, which were useful to have, and then they would give you two options later, yeah. one of which would have been another good upgrade, and then the other one was maybe an okay upgrade and lose the mimics. And you're like, like, like the, the PCS upgrades. Choice? The PCS upgrades. Yeah. That increases stats. If you ignore the first one, when you get the second one, where it's just straight to the superior versions, it's like this is a, a not choice, a non-choice. You just pick that right. every time. Right. Because it adds so much. Yeah. But if it's just an upgrade, you're like, meh, it's not really worth it. And also, yeah. as you said, the perk choices. There were some really stupid perk choices. Like, in the first campaign, you can't conceal. There's no concealment yet. But yet, there was an option for, or a perk that the ranger got that increased damage coming out of concealment. But you can't conceal. Right, right. <laughs> so you would get extra damage. You get extra damage if you happen to be on a mission where concealment was part of the op. But in the campaign, in the first campaign, yeah, yeah, there was no concealment. Yeah. Likewise, right. there's an option for, or a perk, not an option, that's a problem, if it was an option, it'd be better. There was a perk for the support, the, god, I can't remember, what, what's the class called? The the class with the technician. Oh, a specialist. Specialist, yeah. There's a perk they get that gives them more medkit charges for every medkit they've got. Yeah, but they don't have medical protocol. Yeah, exactly. They, yeah. they only have one medkit, so they get a perk for more medkit charges of medkits, but they only have one medkit. You don't have the choice to add more. What? <laughs> did, they, did they really not see this coming? Because that applies throughout the entire campaign. It's like more medkit charges, yeah. but you can't get more medkits. Yeah, I'm not bash <laughs> bashing towards that because I think it's since it's a f uh, quote unquote free DLC yeah. pack. When when uh, I get to the end of this list, I I will point that again. Every, all of yeah, this. I, I, yeah, it's besides. I the can't point. charge it for perfection. I mean, those are such minor things that I just overlooked them. I said, oh, it's a free DLC. I speak, cannot be that guy. Speaking that's of minor that. things, I think it would have been very nice of them to add tooltips for when you get the perks. You know, on that screen where you say, oh, where it shows yeah. um, what everybody gets, what is this perk? I mean, I kind of recognize it, but I don't know what it does. I, and I, sure, I, when you get to the mission, you can get the tooltips there. I, I can almost I can almost assure you that the reason they didn't add more tooltips is, and you and I talked about this before. We oh. Is that well, because that requires localization? Well, no, I, I kind of, I kind of agree, uh, disagree with you there because it will be the same tooltip as the perk itself. When you go into the mission and you put your cursor over the perk, it will oh, give you the tooltip. Yeah, that's true. That's so why wouldn't they just true. use the same perk? Yeah, they tool wouldn't tip. have to recreate the yeah. wheel. They could just use what they had already. Yeah. That's true. But still, it's yeah, again, true. as you said, Vanguard, it's a very minor kind of jab at the game. But one of the things that I had a problem with was, I, as I said, I really liked how there were three avatars at the end of the first campaign, then at the end of the second campaign, then at the end of the third campaign, then at the end of the fourth campaign. But there's four this time. It's like they. They really couldn't have been a bit more original. I get they're using the same models, the same enemies. They're not really adding anything new. And this fight beside, you know, models of, of the weapons and armor and stuff. But when I encountered the first three avatars, I loved how it was refreshing. It made you think. But then you did the exact same thing for the end of campaign two and three and four. Even though four had four avatars. Why didn't they make it so the end of campaign four was like three or four avatars. And the end of campaign one was like three or four gatekeepers in one pod. Or three or four sect pods in one pod. Something they haven't done before, but something they have access to right now. They had the options to change it and make it unique for every campaign. Campaign, but it felt the same at the end of every campaign. And Mickey, if they put a avatar inside a sectopod, huh? huh? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 how difficult would it be? Awesome. How difficult would it be? You kill a sectopod and an avatar comes out of it. That shouldn't be that difficult to program, right? You, the, this unit dies, spawn this unit where this unit died. That'd be awesome. I'd love yeah, that. I was talking that jokingly, but but they could have done that. Use the the sectopod model and give some avatar skills to it. Make it. Make I it that that'd be a. Without, oh, very overpowered. Yeah, no, no, not not but skills, but stats. Because skills, they wouldn't, yeah. you know, they wouldn't know how to use. But stats, yeah, I definitely. Think, I think, Absolutely. I think they could have done like an uber gatekeeper. That would yes. be cool. Yeah. 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 Something could, like that. Like, oh my god, like a, a alien ruler version of that alien type, but not right, rulers that right. we've already encountered. So no new model. You don't need a new model. Just give it more stats and more passive abilities. Well, let's, not active let's ones, try, but passive let's ones. Let's try to wrap this one up because we don't want any of these videos to get too long. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, let's just, let's um, just, in, terms of the, in terms of the present XCOM, that's 
Tactical Legacy Pack, War of the Chosen. You know, let's let's talk briefly about War of the Chosen and then let's Hold on, hold on, hold on. Present. Couple more points I want to add. How comes you have to play through the campaign to unlock the weapons and armors? They give you an incentive to do it. Yeah, but they shouldn't have to. And also, you can't play as the aliens in a cu custom mission. I hate that. Why can't you play as the aliens in a custom mission? Because they don't like you, Mickey. It's, <laughs> now, it, maybe, but maybe it's one of the key the reasons why I... Not. Mickey, maybe because the aliens were not ready to be controlled. But they them. were, because you can mind control them and hack them. They were ready. That's a problem. I think the problem was, because then you'd ask, why can't you go up against XCOM? And the AI can't handle that. But it's a real shame, a real missed opportunity they didn't let yeah. you play as the aliens in a custom mission. And uh, <laughs> a couple of minor things that aren't points, but I really want to point Max up. I'm really funny. Do you remember when Baby Shen mentions about how Valen and her dad used to argue about keeping human beings human? Then do you remember in Enemy Within, when Shen was like, a snip here, a cut here, will make you into mech in no time? What? <laughs> was, was Shen, yeah, Shen arguing think, about keeping think, human? But, but I think I think with Shen, though, that was more of him being facetious about it. He was yeah, never yeah. really comfortable with in, it. In Enemy Unknown, he was like that. He did say that they changed the lives for Enemy Within. The last one I want to say very quickly, again, just pointing out, I thought it was funny. The quotes they say sometimes at the end of every mission was, it'll be hard to forget what we saw that day. Would it Would it be hard to forget forget Encounter and Gatekeeper and Avatar? Because I think you'll forget very easily when we get back to the main campaign. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We've never <laughs> seen this before. Yeah, we've never seen this. I'll, I'll yeah, never forget that. But that's part of, that's, again, that's part of the, you got to do Yeah, that, that's just fine. I, I, yeah. I just pointed out because I thought I found it funny. What bugs did you encounter with the game? Because this is a problem when you get a new game, bugs are relevant. It does impact your play. Because I know you encountered bugs, Mel. Uh, I, the only bug I encountered was I was the third set of missions. I played through several missions already, and then I was done recording for the day, and then when I came back, I was back at the first mission so i had to play through like four or five missions again by myself to get back at the point where you know everybody could sort of rejoin me and that the continuity would be there so that was that was it was okay it was i guess in the grand uh, okay season, all right it, it cost me about two hours that i didn't really want to that do, you know that really sucks i know that's not the only bug you encountered though what i encountered uh, was uh, not big deal a corpse when it died it just, it just remained standing up found that quite funny not big deal once i left the game running and i wouldn't get something to eat came back and the game had crashed kind of annoying and it, it saved the progress i think it auto saved so it wasn't a big deal infinite alien turns i know you've had this as well the turn well, not infinite but they've been lasting much much longer than they should i've seen when you were playing you'd take a turn or well, the aliens would take a turn and you're just sitting there waiting for the camera to get back into your control oh well that and then the and then the underlying you know taking forever for overwatch animations to yes happen. yes there's big delays i can't believe that still has yes effect. yeah like, like, if i mean if there's a mod the original XCOM if too. there's a mod called stop wasting my time then you know that game's got a problem yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and still has been fixed. I, I would like to actually point out something they added. I suspect they added because I'm very, very happy they added this because it was in Invisible Ink, but not in XCOM 2 or XCOM 1. Again, a bad thing about XCOM 1 was infinite alien turns. We've all encountered them if you played long enough where the aliens taking their turns, nothing happens. The game just stays where it is. It's soft locked, basically. You don't get your turn back. But I suspect they've done what they did in Invisible Ink. When I played Invisible Ink once, once there was an infinite enemy turn, a scanner bot was just scanning repeatedly. But after about 30 seconds or a minute, the turn came back to me. And I think they finally, finally added a fail safe in I have to wrap this up <laughs> <laughs> Mal I have a lot to say damn it if you want to cut these into short videos fine I think they added a fail safe in the alien turns there's you. there's no more <laughs> infinite turns guys there's no more infinite turn bug I think after about 30 seconds or a minute it cuts the enemy's turn and I am very happy they added that because that is I'm gonna implement that here in a minute <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, yeah, okay, yeah. There's something to talk about on this Okay, board. Mal, I, I would rather talk about the problems with the game, but Mal would rather just wrap it up. Yeah. So anyway, I'm very glad they added that. It was really good of them. Other things I've had a problem with, and Mal, I know you had this as well, engaging an enemy pod out of range and it not triggering. Oh, I had that yeah. a lot. Yeah, that was that was frustrating, actually. Another problem I had was I, I mind-controlled a berserker. Another berserker knocked him out to one hit, 50% chance to knock out a target they hit, and the mind-controlled berserker that I had remained in my control. Oh, no, it remained in the enemy control and the game wouldn't end because there was an alien alive. I had to restart, which was oh. pretty annoying. But yeah, if you want to wrap this up and we'll continue this in another video. Oh, teleporting avatars. I know you had this problem as well. Yes, the avatar would teleport during an overwatch and where you're targeting wouldn't be where the avatar is. Oh, I yeah. saw you that's had that. Old, that's, a, that's an old bug. Yeah, they would teleport to your left, but they would be behind you to the right, like yes. behind three walls. Yeah. And you're like, what? Yeah, let, let me sum it up. Basically, what's Mickey trying to say is that Firaxis is a <laughs> 
completion of Bethesda game. <laughs> That's all, okay? <laughs> okay, so Mal, do you want to end the video here and we'll talk about more of the Chosen in the next video? Yeah, I think it's better. Yeah, Should we do that? I mean, I mean, I don't know. It sounds like you guys have a lot to say about. I have a lot to say, I do. And I think it's honestly important what I have to say because okay, I wouldn't okay, have written it all down. So... It's just one phrase. It's a bad DLC. Yes, but oh, why? Okay, now, why? On, exactly. You can't just say it's bad. Otherwise, I'm going to be like say, all those commenters that say, say that. you're wrong. You can't just say that. All yeah. right, so here's what we'll do. We'll come back in the next one and we're going to talk about the DLC and the mods for XCOM 2. That'll be our next All of the video. DLC, so yeah. We, but uh, not the base hope, game. Not yet. Yeah, so we hope that you enjoyed this one. If you did, consider hitting that thumbs up. If you've got questions or comments, whatever, of course, leave them below. We appreciate you joining us for this. For next time, I'm Mal for Mickey and Vanguard, and we will see you later. Bye, Goodbye. guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.